Well, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us again for another WKS podcast. Uh, this time I'm with uh, Ollie Robinson from a band called Days in Wake. How's things? Great. Thank you for having me on, Craig. Uh, yeah, very excited to be here, and it's uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, no worries, mate. No worries. Do you want to do you want to start off by um, telling us a bit about how you got into music, uh, and then sort of how you got into the band uh, Days of Wake? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. So um, I've, I've always loved music. Um, since when I was a kid, my dream job was to basically just be Slash uh, from Guns N' Roses. My dad used to play uh, so much uh, classic rock on the repeat all the time, every day, and I just got so into it. Um, and over time, I started to learn. Uh, I learned piano from a young age, and I got really quite into into writing just like little little bits and bobs uh fast forward a few years to uh when i was in school i was writing songs and i decided you know one day i've just got all my money together and thought i'm going to go to a studio i'm going to go record um go record a record and, and you know make my make my debut so to speak so i went to a local studio and i recorded uh four of my songs that i'd written um and unfortunately the studio they kind of knew that I was really quite young and quite inexperienced they just kind of rushed me through threw me out the other end with a project that I that I really wasn't happy with and had used up the majority of um of my funds when I was a kid you know I think it cost 400 pounds or something which was you know for someone who's 15 that's quite a bit of money um and I was I was really I was really unhappy with the final product I thought that it was going to be you know I thought it was going to turn out sounding like all the great records that I listened to uh, that my dad is showing me when I was a kid and um, but I kind of I sort of picked myself up and I thought oh do you know what I don't think that shouldn't have happened to me it shouldn't have to happen to anyone else really so I decided well I'm just going to learn how to do it myself so that when I next do a record I I can do a better job and do it exactly how I want um, so I started I started to learn production and very quickly got into working a lot with other artists and started to realize that I really enjoyed really enjoyed session writing essentially writing with other artists writing arrangements for artist songs um and then it kind of it kind of blossomed blossomed quite quick from there and then my career progressed into being uh being a producer where i when i was in college i decided you know what i'm i reckon i can make a bit of money out of this so i started a uh well my company which is called arms records um started recording a lot of of my friends and local artists, uh, which then blossomed further to the point that I then went and spent a year working at um, Abbey Road Studios Institute, which is their their internship division. Got accepted onto that, and everything everything kind of went uphill from there to the point where I'm now opening that. Well, I've I've opened two commercial studios, so I opened Apex Studios in Portsmouth, uh, which was just before the first lockdown, which unfortunately we had to. To kill because well it covid killed us I and mean, it just wasn't wasn't worth it but that was that went on for about eight months and that was that was quite successful but i'm now um i'm now at the angel inn in southampton which is where we've opened the uh, as far as we're aware the uk's first commercial recording studio in a pub okay. which is a which is a new direction which we're we're really excited about um and when it comes to days and wake days and wake is a, a band that i formed over uh, over the course of the Apex Studios and Angel Inn period of my career, where I was uh, I used to work with a band called the Dusty Trims, who were quite big on the Southampton circuit, uh, and we were recording them. And then, unfortunately, they they broke up. And their guitarist Jack Guy, who um, I'm very good friends with, was looking for a new project and uh, spoke to me being like you know do you want to take part in in a heavy project and i've always loved metal and throughout lockdown i taught myself how to do screamo and how to how to sing properly uh, to the point that jack asked me to even teach him and rather amusingly the immediate members who then formed days and wake were the remnants of the dusty trim so the dusty trims essentially just became a metalcore band overnight and that was really how how days and wake was born okay right Brilliant. So, um, have you got a preference then to whether you, you know, you like the production side of things or the live music side playing, or is it just equal, equal, you know? 
So I, I couldn't actually particularly really comment on that one at present purely just because I've spent the last four years in studios uh, recording away. I have the last time I played a live gig was when I was in a, an indie band called Amaro's and uh, we we did a load of gig circuits and stuff. But again, that was back when I was 17, done session playing, which is, which is, which is good fun. But my work has been purely studio based really mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. So I'm really excited to get out gigging again. And it has been my absolute dream beyond anything to uh, be the front man of a metalcore band. And so when gig season start up, I honestly, I don't think that uh, anything will be more exciting for me. Uh, than getting back up on stage and doing, uh, being part of a project that I, as a person, never thought that I would be able to be in, really. Right, fair play, fair play. Have you got any sort of music out there at the moment then, or no? Uh, so it's time to plug the song. So our first track, uh, Sleep Talk, comes out on the 5th of next month, uh, which we're, all, we're very excited about. That is our, that is our debut, so uh, make sure that you pre-save it and give it a listen when it drops. Okay, when, uh, where can people get hold of it then? So you can, uh, it's all, all platforms, so Spotify, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple, the whole lot. Okay. Um, it's going out as a full commercial release. So wherever you find it, type in Days and Weeks Sleep Talk, and that will be the first track that will come up. Okay, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So do you do um, uh, writing yourself, lyrics, or...? You know, yeah, so, so uh, in terms of writing, um, we write a lot as a band together. But for this first track, it was a it was again done during during lockdown. Uh, so the song I wrote with Jack uh, in our garage, or well, in my garage back in Winchester. Uh, and I'll be honest, actually, I don't think any part of the song that we made in the garage actually featured on the final record. <laughs> yeah. But in the the idea was the idea was born there um, for sleep talk. I did most of the writing um, from music to lyrics based off ideas that I myself and my band members came up with because we were stuck stuck in lockdown. We couldn't all get in a studio together. But I had just taken apart Apex Studio, so I had an entire commercial studio crammed into my house at home. Um, so I decided that you know we'll, we'll do it we'll do it remotely, and I will learn i've always loved producing metalcore but i thought this is my band's first track i'm going to make it the single most perfect polished product that i have that i've ever made in my production career and the final track took about six months to put together okay. uh but it, it's put given us the blueprints for the rest um and overall yeah the majority of this song was a lot of my writing from lyrics as well and, and vocal melodies but uh we've got some new tracks in the works which have been written by the other band members and we're really excited to get them out as well brilliant brilliant so you say your studio now is in a pub is that right it is it currently is in a pub i mean i have no idea if you can see well, I, think, I can hear in the back there. i can hear in the background uh, <laughs> quite a bit of uh, stuff so i'm assuming that's, yeah you're open now is. are you yeah, we literally are open now. We're um, obviously it's during COVID, so no one's allowed inside. We've got yeah. uh, our outside our outside area is open, um, which is already starting to fill up with customers. Uh, currently, the studio has been just built in the middle of the pub floor, so we're down in uh, the second uh, sort of seating level. Uh, but we are currently building uh, dedicated studio rooms within the pub, so a control room and a live room. And it, yeah, it will be a complete commercial studio within a pub. It's called Barside Studios because it is about a three second commute to the bar from the pub. And uh, yeah, it's it's quite a it's, it's quite a mission. Uh, okay. It's a lot of hard work, but we're <laughs> yeah, loving it. Yeah. So if um, <coughs> excuse me, if bands want to get hold of you to to do some uh, production sort of stuff, have you got a website or how would they go about you know getting hold of you? Yes, so the studio itself is called Barside Studios, but I still run uh, my company, Armist Records, that I started uh, in college. That's that's still going strong, and it's it's growing to great new levels. So uh, you literally can find that by typing in Armist Records on Google, and from there you can either do that on Google, Facebook, Instagram. If you do it through the website, there's a submission form where you just send your inquiry, and Instagram and Facebook is just a drop, just an email away, really, or a, or a direct message. Okay, brilliant. So, um, you know what? What's the best bit of advice then you you think you've been given? Then, uh, you know, think back and 
all that Ooh. sort of stuff. The best bit, the best bit of advice that I've ever been given is a. Uh, that is that that is quite a tough one. I've been quite fortunate in life to have a, a couple of quite quite good mentors. Um, I, I'd say, I'd say, in, as one that made an impact in my career from a mixing mixing perspective, so a huge part of my job is mixing and producing music, and it's all about getting the best, the biggest, the widest, the loudest, the fattest sounding records you can. And there's a lot of stress involved in that, just constantly listening to music, your favorite tracks and going, oh, why does, why does mine not sound like that? And it, mm. and it goes across from studio production all the way to um, writing my own music as well. And my, the best bit of advice that I've got given was when I was at Abbey Road, we had a guest lecture from Andrew Sheps, who is one of the, uh, the industry's biggest name when it comes to mixing. And he literally said, don't, don't listen to anything that anyone says about the limits of what, of what you can do. Do whatever it takes to make the record sound best. Even if it's, if you have to add 30 dB of bass to make something sound good, then do it. Just do whatever, whatever it takes. Mm. Don't worry about what the, what the professionals say you can and can't do what's technically right and wrong. Sod it all, just whatever. Uh, oh, whatever right. you need to do to get it to sound right, do it. And that opened up a lot of doors uh, in my production. And it just meant that I could sit down and just focus on getting it to how I sounded and not how I wanted it to sound and not having it tucked in the constraints of yeah. the theory of music yeah. production, essentially. That's fantastic. That is absolutely brilliant. So <clears throat> you mentioned Slash earlier. Um, you know, which famous musicians do you admire then? Ooh, well, that is a, that's a tough one. So, um, I mean, I, I admire a few. So, I mean, right from, from my youth, I remember that I was the most avid Bon Jovi fan you'll ever, ever have come across. Uh, bon Jovi was, yeah, they were just my first kind of favourite band, so to speak. Um, and then a while later, my second my second biggest kind of favorite band was essentially still Bon Jovi because the guitarist of Bon Jovi went off and did a solo career and I became obsessed with his music. So it was basically just Bon Jovi Mark II. I uh, eventually grew up the Bon Jovi phase and got a lot into um, into like rock and sort of harder rock and metal. Of course, so it all started with Guns N' Roses, which was uh, the descent into it's the darkness of heavy of rock and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and then I think I went through the same sort of 2014, 2015 emo phase that a lot of people uh, seem to. So everyone got obsessed with asking Alexandria for a while and everyone went a bit emo. Uh, so I still love all those kind of bands like Bring Me the Horizon and stuff. And at present, uh, my favorite band of all time is a band called, a metal band called Wage War. And they, were, I didn't actually really know them that well until I, I heard one of their songs, which I thought was the greatest thing I'd ever heard. Put myself with a friend to go see them in London. Uh, didn't really know many of their songs, got there, and it was the single craziest gig I've ever been to in my life. And, and then it was at that point, which I was like, I want to do that. That is yeah, what I want to do yeah. for the rest of my life. And fantastic. I'm having, a, having a crack at it now, essentially. Yeah, 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 fantastic. So what? So what? Are, what's your future future plans now? I know we're coming out of lockdown. So is it is it literally to get an album together? Is it to get as many live performances? It's yeah. It, it's it's a tough one because there's a hell of a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it in. Um, we've we'd love to do a an extended record. Uh, the problem with the metalcore is just it's it's a fairly technical genre to to produce to the to the level that it needs to be to be a success because it's such a um, it's such a diverse genre and it's done so well uh, from all, all the kind of industry standard. Uh, it is a superbly sounding uh, production and arrangement in terms of uh, music. So the plan is to do that. It's going to take a while to put records together, but we want to dive in and do and take the new wave of gigs by absolute storm. Everyone has been sat around wanting to get uh, wanting to go to gigs for months now, yeah. and yeah. we want to we want to be right on the cusp of that. So we've got some gigs lined up. Uh, we just need to um, make sure that we can match what we do on stage in the studio, and yeah, make sure that we can put out records that people love. Really, that is, the, that is the goal. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right, final question for you, mate. Is there mm. anybody you'd like to thank for you being here musically now? 
Ooh. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are so many, uh, I'll be honest. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, actually. I think um, I'd have to say my, uh, I think my friend Maddie is probably one of the people who I'd accredit a huge amount of the encouragement that has just gone, not through just music, uh, through life as well. Um, and yeah, I've, I've always got so much encouragement and never any doubt um, from her in pushing my career forwards. So yeah, I want to say a massive thank you, huge amount of it, of me being sat in a pub in a recording studio. It's down here, man, so cheers. Brilliant, superb. Look, Ollie, I hope everything goes from strength to strength, you know, pub and music and production, everything. And, you know, just good luck, mate. Thank you very much. So thank you very much uh, for the interview. It was, it was great fun. Thank you for your time. No problem. See you later. See you soon, dude. Take it easy.